Yes, you read that right. We bought a $300,000 van. But in this video, not only are we going to give you a walkthrough of it, right Dash? But we're also gonna talk a little bit about why we decided it was time to take our RV life to the next level and how this $300,000 van is actually going to end up saving us money. So, come along, let's check it out. And I'm Daniel. And this is Baby Dash. And we've actually been traveling for about five and a half years full time, but only started our YouTube channel about two and a half years ago when we bought our Airstream Classic. The traditional travel trailer, silver, beautiful, which we've absolutely loved, but we decided that a van really fit our lifestyle a little bit better for what we wanted for the next phase. We're kind of getting a little bit tired of the campgrounds and particularly the campground cost because when we first started traveling, it was somewhat affordable, but certain campgrounds now have increased their cost. So well, to set the stage, yeah. when we first started RV life about two and a half years ago, we would look at campgrounds and expecting them to be somewhere between 30 to $60 a night. Today- On the high end, on the high end, right? Yeah. Today, that can be astronomically more. It seems like these days for a 50 amp full hookup uh, RV spot, you can really very easily pay anywhere from 60 to $150 a night. And, and sometimes more. And sometimes yeah. more. Yeah. yeah. And you're not getting anything more for your money. The same concrete pad you had before, nothing new, double the price. Now, besides the cost of the campgrounds, there was another thing that we really, really were after with switching over to van versus the travel trailer life. And one of those things is that when you imagine all of the beautiful pictures you see in like Instagram and Facebook and all those social platforms, you typically see like your camper and there's this beautiful landscapes and on a riverbank. And the reality is if you have a huge camper, those hard to get spots into. Are, those spots are very, very hard to get to. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible, but they're more difficult to get to. Now, whereas with this van, we can access places we never, ever could before with our 30-foot travel trailer. And so. part of the reason that it's so freaking expensive is the insane energy pack energy setup what would you what's yeah. it called so airstream calls it the e1 package and it is outfitted with a huge battery bank 3200 watt inverter we've got 400 watts of solar on the roof so basically we're completely self-sustainable exactly so we have the ability to ba to go off grid and pay zero campground fees and stay in some of those picturesque locations that you know we sort of dreamed about when we first started camping um, so we've been really, really excited about that. So enough about us. Let's show you the rig. Now we've told you we've got an Airstream. Let's talk about the specifics. Now this model here is the Airstream Interstate 24 Grand Touring or GT for short. Now it comes equipped with a ton of features and some add-on options we added to the base package. One of which is four x four. So this is outfitted with a four x four package which means that the van itself sits an entire three inches taller than the base package. The second thing we added is auto leveling jacks, which we'll show you in a minute. And the third thing is the E1 power package, which is a huge upgrade of plenty of systems that we'll dig a little bit deeper into as we walk through the van. Let's first talk about the chassis because I think that's very, very important to start with. First, you'll notice that it is the Mercedes chassis, and this is built on the Mercedes Sprinter 3500 EXT. The EXT stands for extended. And what that means is that it's got a longer wheelbase. Now, this particular version comes in a 19 foot version, but it also comes in a 24 foot version, which is what we have. Woo! See, she's really long. 
Another really cool feature about having a van over a huge travel trailer is that, well, for instance, right now, we're doing what's called mooch docking at Lauren's dad's house. And as you can see, it fits in one of the normal spaces here, and we've got it plugged into a 15 amp outlet, which is just your typical outlet. Here you go, and here's the plug. Here, I'll show you where it goes to. Yep, folks, that's right. That's a regular wall unit. Now, another really cool feature is that despite this being a 30 amp system, um, we're running currently off of 15 amps, but even if we weren't plugged in right now, we could still run the AC for an estimated eight to 10 hours on just the battery bank we have inside here that was included with the E1 package. So that's gonna be especially helpful for some of those hot summer days, which right now currently, it's a, uh, it's a bit warm. Well, and Daniel, yeah. tell us how much that E1 package cost MSRP because that's a big piece of why this van is not cheap. It is, yeah. So the E1 package from Airstream comes an MSRP of around twenty four thousand dollars, and there's a ton of things that are included in it. And honestly, honest to God, truth, if you were to go and try to build out a similar system, it is no doubt going to cost similar to that because you have to include the parts itself and then of course unless you're a huge do it yourselfer you of course have your labor cost as well another really cool thing about getting the e1 package added at the factory is that well it's done during the build process so you're not having to retrofit everything in the van to accommodate for the new equipment that you're adding so huge advantage of getting it done by the fa factory when it's being built Dash feels sleepy just thinking about having to build out that system, don't I you, buddy? No, right? <laughs> there is so many features more than we could ever include in really an hour-long video, so we're gonna be the highlights. Above me, you'll see the power awning, and it's an armless awning, which means the arms are built in, and it'll it fully extend without any like dangling arms inside there. Another really cool thing about not having the arms for the awning on the side is that it kind of has that incognito van look to it. So if you're parking in, let's just say, uh, a grocery market, unless you really knew what you were looking at, it would just look like a typical Sprinter van, sort of. Another cool thing is that, oh, I think we skipped this over here, but we've got a couple of outlets here. So we've got your typical two plug outlet there, and then you've got another one here for the satellite dish. AKA Starlink? Yeah, that's exactly what we'll end up doing with this hookup here. We'll end up retrofitting it with something that we allow, that will allow us to plug in the Starlink system in a later video. And another really cool feature is that we've got one of these on each side. This is a port for external solar as well. So we've talked about how it comes equipped with 400 watts of solar on the roof, but if you wanted to power it up even more, you can add up to 300 watts on this side and 300 watts on the other side. So that gives you 600 watts plus 400 on the top. It's a thousand watts of solar that's possible here with this unit. Now, if you were buying the standard 24 foot uh, interstate, it would come equipped with propane because this has the entire electric system. There's nothing here, but this is the panel where you would typically access your propane. Ports. But because of the E1, it's whoop, whoop, whoop. basically empty. Nothing there. And it's important to note that this is a dually as well system. So, you know, there are a lot of uh, Sprinter chassis that just have the four tires. This one has six, right? Is it, you're trying to count, Dash? Trying to count to six? Right? One, two, three, five, six. See, ish. Dad, I'm only one. It's a little early. <laughs> there you go. See, you at least can count to five. <laughs> There's also cameras built into the side of your mirrors here. There's cameras in the back. Um, one of the things that we noted in a previous video is that it doesn't have the 360 camera angles that you would typically c come standard in like a different type of Mercedes. Some of your C-Class, G-Class, S-Classes. Um, with this system, the Sprinter van system, you only have the rear cameras and then you've got some side cameras. And one of the really cool things that I've liked about this in the first handful of days is that when you put your side view blinker on, this camera kicks on and there's a digital uh, rear view mirror that will switch over to the side view camera, which makes it really, really cool when you're changing lanes because you can see the entire lane from this one camera. So really, really, really cool feature. 
Oh, as far as what's under the hood, we've got a Mercedes 3 liter V6 turbo diesel engine. This puppy is putting out 188 horsepower and 325 foot pounds of torque, which is especially helpful if you're trying to get out in sticky situations. And if the whole thing goes sideways from a storage perspective, good news. We have so much towing power, we can actually tow a Bambi behind us. The exact amount we can tow is, it's a little over 5,000 pounds, like 5,200 pounds, 5,400 pounds, somewhere around that. Uh, there's a hitch in the back, it's already built in, but it's covered up with some body paneling. But in order to use the hitch, you just basically remove that body panel and then you have access to the hitch. Now, one of the most amazing things about this RV over our last one is that typically Airstreams come with like a hundred keys and you just, when you're walking around a campground, it's like jingling, jingling. You've got like your, your, your lanyard with all your keys on it. You know, you sound like the key man. Um, with this van, one key for like all of the things. Um, so let's look at this first compartment here. We think Dash. What is this? This is your inlet, your water inlet. So this is where you essentially fill your tank. You have it set up for dry camping. And if you were hooked up to city, you'd flip it to city here to the right. Another cool thing about it is that it's vented here. So you can just basically hook up the water and just let it fill until it's completely filled. And when it's filled, water will come out of that vent system. So you don't even have to monitor it while you're filling it up. Okay, cool. This next compartment. Well, I'm doing this one-handed here. Epic fail. Uh, epic fail. I can drop the keys, but I can't drop the baby. Agreed. <laughs> okay. Now that is well, I've got a few things here. You've got some service lights here, your cable inlet, and that is also where we would uh, dump the tanks. Now we'll talk a little bit more about that in a future video, but it has a macerating toilet, which means it kind of like, it's kind of like a having a food processor um, or really more of a garbage disposal hooked up to your, your, uh, your toilet. It kind of grounds everything up and then it allows you to dump um, through this really cool hose system. That Time. Yeah, see, Dash isn't really excited about dumping the tanks ever, um, so he's not too excited about this feature. We won't spend a lot of time on that now. This right below it is, bam, your hookup for your outdoor shower. So you've got a hot nozzle, you've got a cold nozzle, and it's got a quick connect adapter. So you basically just quick connect your hose, and you can shower outside if you want to. There we go. And this right here is what I was talking about that's connected to the tanks. We've got three tanks on board. You've got a gray tank, a black tank, and your fresh water tank that you can either fill with city water or you can just manually fill it. Okay, and basically what you would do is you would pull this out, you would connect it to your sewer system, or apparently there's a way to basically just run this to a toilet because everything is so ground that you can just flush in a normal toilet. Weird. Not certain about all of the details there. If you have a macerating toilet system like this, well, then leave a comment below because we're still new to this. So there's gonna be a little bit of learning curve here. And this is one of my favorite things that Airstream started adding in late 2020. No, late 2021. Um, it's the smart plug system and in the past, if you were to hook up your power plugs here, there was a twisting lock mechanism and those could go bad um, over time. So with this system, you just pinch the sides and you remove it so, so easily. Uh, this is one of my, probably one of Airstream's best upgrades over the last five to 10 years, I think, the smart plug system. So that's pretty cool. And here's that other port we are talking about where you can add an additional 300 watts of solar. Whoa! Dash. Whoa. Keys down. Here we go. Keys down. Keys down. Now we did mention that this is a Tommy Bahama edition. The Tommy Bahama edition is all also comes in at an added cost. But the real question is, what's so special about this Tommy Bahama edition? Well, for that, I'm going to turn it over to Lauren. All right, I'm going to take you on a tour of the interior. If you've been following along with our channel for very long, you know we have an Airstream 30-foot travel trailer. So part of how the van is actually saving us money is it means we no longer need a tow vehicle and we're selling the truck. So that saves us a little over $1,000 a month because, well, 
the van is a drivable. So let's look at that driver's seat. First thing you'll notice is getting into this thing, it's definitely higher than our uh, uh, Ford F-250. But this is Dash's favorite seat. Oh. When Dee and I first started looking at Airstreams, we actually owned a Mercedes, a Mercedes SUV and I loved driving that thing. And because this is on a Mercedes chassis, it has a lot of the same things that our SUV did, which I absolutely love. We've only had it for a little over a week now and driving it is, well, easy. It's a lot like driving the, the truck and it's just a tiny bit longer. So you just pay a little bit more attention to the mirrors. But as far as it feeling really comfortable, if you've ever driven a Mercedes in general, it's super similar. With it being a drivable, this gives us so much more flexibility. Now, instead of being the length of our truck and the length of our 30 foot Airstream, which totals up to about 50 something odd feet, we're only 24 feet long, which means we can fit into a lot more really beautiful spots. Right, Dash? Mm. Yeah? Do you like driving the van? Da, 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 da. This thing is really comfortable. Okay, let's go look at the living quarters because yes, we're gonna be living in this thing full time, even with a baby. But come around to the other side. Sliding door is pretty cool. First things first, you'll notice our cool little step that makes it super easy to get in and out of the van. But because we have a lot less space inside, it's going to be, we're, we're going to be using a lot more of our outdoor space. So some of the things that I love that the van does to make that really easy is, A, we've got this cool little bug thingy maduji, which means we can enjoy the outdoors without, well, the bugs. Come on in, I gotta put this uh, parking brake on because Dash loves the front seat. All right, now that that's nice and safe, these seats actually spin around. But I think I mentioned a second ago that we've only had this thing for a week. So how that really works, I don't know. Stay tuned for another video coming soon where we'll show you that. But what I love about these turning around is that this is actually where my office is going to be. One of the things we get asked about a lot is how the heck do we actually afford this lifestyle? Well, I work on the road and Daniel is now officially a stay at home dad. So question being, of course, what the heck? That's the question. The question we get asked is what the heck do I do for a living? I actually started my own business when I was in college and it's done really well. What we do is we actually support fast growth companies with their branding, culture, recruitment, and marketing initiatives. Usually these companies are backed by uh, private equity firms and we help them scale really quickly. So this is where I'm gonna be doing that. I have a table. I actually have a better office set up than I did in the old Airstream because my laptop is going to actually fit into this TV as a second screen and this chair is just gonna spin right around like a legit office setup which I have never had since we started traveling full-time I'm really pumped about this now above my office setup is all the fancy things that go along with a van and you know I have absolutely no idea in about any of those things so I'm gonna switch spots with Daniel on the camera and let him fill you in on all that good stuff the first thing you'll notice is to the left here and this is to power the subwoofer. Now, besides having the front radio system that comes with the Mercedes chassis, you also have a secondary radio here that gives you sound throughout the cabin, which is really, really cool. Now, this up here is for the Volta power system. Now, as you can see right now, we've got a huge battery pack and we're sitting at close to 100 percent battery power which is fantastic now it's saying that we have 125 hours of power remaining um the 
panel to your left here is one of three panels. This is the main panel, but there's also two panels throughout the cabin as well. And from those three panels, you can access everything from, I'm gonna flip you through it, show you some of the tabs here. You, this is the main panel here. This is your home screen on the top left. You have your master light on off switch. You have all three of the tanks and you have the electronic levels here. You've got tank heaters. Um, for colder weather, you've got a water pump uh, when you're off of your city line water system. You've got three lighting modes, medium dim, low dim, and cinema mode, if in case you're watching a movie. It comes equipped with two TVs, so if you're setting it to cinema mode, you're in the back and you've got the bed reclined back there and you want to watch a movie, you can just set it to cinema mode. Um, one of the really cool things about that is that you've got two, not one, but two, HDMI ports back here. Up here. Up here. I should say that up here. And the plan is I'm going to hook an Apple TV up to this. And ideally, the back TV will access Apple TV from here. So that would be pretty cool. Fingers crossed. And that's probably also where I'm going to put the wireless router for our internet as well. Right, Dash? Dash, you look like you're having way too much fun up here, dude. Woohoo! Do you love the new van? Yeah. Now that we've gotten some of the technical aspects out of the way, I'll show you our actual living space. Which, yes, significantly smaller, and there are three of us, but we're really big on minimalism. I think it's going to work great. If it doesn't, we have a life motto that you try anything for six months, and if it doesn't work, well, then you change it. So, step one. Our closet, well, it's got a little bit less space than what we had in our 30-foot airstream. But you still got good space, and we went to the container store and got some things to make this function a little bit better. One of the things I do really like about this is that it does have these pull-out drawers, which makes this space a lot more functional, considering the depth of this actual closet. So, I'm sure we'll be able to fill that up really quickly. It also has a really nice size refrigerator for a van. In fact, maybe one of the biggest that we saw when we were looking at vans. We've got a solid freezer in here, which is probably about the same size as it was in our classic. And then we've got a nice big refrigerator. La -la -la. We'll see how things go when we actually start putting food in them. But one of the things that I do like about this refrigerator that's different than what our Airstream was is this actually has little locks on it, which is pretty cool for both refrigerator and freezer for when you're going down the road, which is just really intelligent. Okay, so we've got like half bedroom closet, half kitchen, kitchen over here. Um, one of the things that I'm mildly concerned about is that our sink is, well, tiny. Um, I'm not really sure why the sink is quite so small because there's pretty good space underneath here, but what this is gonna make sure we do is do the dishes as we go and not be lazy. So that'll probably be a good thing. We have quite a bit of storage underneath this kitchen area. Um, this little drawer is just kind of, I have no idea what we're gonna put in there. Not sure how functional that is. and. Another silly thing that I think is goofy about this is this is supposed to be for a paper towel holder. Um, if anybody knows where you buy paper towel holders that are that thin, let me know. But trash can, pretty straightforward. And a little drawer. From here, as you come on back, we've got more storage. So you'll see these drawers are pretty decent size. That drawer is just huge. Likely gonna use that for pots and pans. And then another really big one right here. Because we got the E1 package, we don't have propane. So our one stove top is actually induction. Luckily our pans were already built for that, but Daniel did have to get a new coffee pot to make this thing work. We've got a really tiny little storage spot right above here, so I'm sure we'll add some food storage there. 
and as you come on down, you'll see just pretty standard storage cabinetry. I will note that this little piece comes specifically with the Tom and Bahama because there's a whole lot of accessories, which we'll show you in a minute here, that come with this unit because it's Tommy Bahama. But thankfully, this thing does come out because that's not functional full time living. All right, so another thing that you will see in our van, oh, it's locked right now, so you gotta unlock it, is a really solid sized microwave. Unfortunately, it's not convection and we don't have an oven, so we're gonna have to figure that out about van life, too. Underneath it, more storage. And as Ciamara from Lily's Organizing says, we're really going to try to fall in love with some empty spaces here because, well, this is a lot more minimalistic than we've been living in the last couple of years. Do you like it, Dash? Oh, speaking of, if you look down here where Dash is on the floor, little Dash cam view, you'll notice the flooring here. This is another thing we love about the Airstream Interstate. The flooring is very similar to our Airstream Classic. The flooring is something that they use in a lot of like yachts, but it's really, really easy to clean and doesn't stain. Okay, come on back. I'll show you the bathroom. Okay, so to be fair, this is the thing that before we started looking at vans, I was the most nervous about. The idea of a toilet being in your shower beyond me. But I'm pretty sure that the winds with the van are going to outweigh this. Come check out how cool this thing is. As you can see, toilet in the shower. But you might be surprised by how big this thing actually is. I'll get in here so you can see it from a size perspective. I'm five foot six and this is actually a lot more space than was in our shower in the Airstream Classic. But basically, how the shower works, take the faucet, you pull it up here, and voila, shower time. We even had this cool little curtain so you don't get the door wet, which is pretty nifty. And like Daniel mentioned, our toilet's macerating, which we haven't really used it very much yet, so I don't really know how I feel about it compared to our toilet in the other Airstream. But it's supposed to basically be like a food processor for your you-know-what. So, should be interesting. As we come a little further back into the van, obviously you can probably hear the air conditioning. What's really nice about this thing is not only is it a van that has air conditioning, but it cools this place down so quickly. And not only that, but this whole system, even if we were plugged in, it actually runs the AC with that E1 package for hours on end. And then not only that, but when you run your batteries down using the AC, when you drive it, it recharges it, which is amazing and mind blowing. Another thing, of course, you would expect all of the bougie accoutrements with a $300,000 van, and you definitely get that. One of those bougie things is the blind system in here. It's on a remote control, and to get them to go up, voila, just press a button. Back here is our living room slash bedroom. So as you can see, it's set up right now. This is our living space during the day, which is actually pretty roomy and also where we're putting Dash's car seat. It goes here, it's currently in the truck, but we have already tested it out. It fits in here great, the seat belt system works fantastic, um, and this is where he's gonna sit. So, that being said, this thing actually turns into a king-size bed. I'll show you how that works now. To see how we put the bed down, we've actually gotta come back to the front of the van. It's on an electric system, which is right here. And obviously only operate one switch at a time to prevent potential personal injury. And don't leave the baby in the back when you do this. But this is basically how it works. Press this down and Ottoman one starts coming out. Press the next one down. 
thing. And press this one. And as you can see, well, the bed's kind of huge. Have we slept in it to tell you how comfortable it is yet? No, we're gonna be doing that soon. Daniel is really excited about how big it is because it's been a really long time since we've had a king size bed. Also, if the bed isn't quite big enough for you as it stands right now, there's even an extender where you can remove the headsets back here and they have, it adds another couple of inches for your head. It's pretty solid. Do you like it, Dash? Is this a really big bed? Yeah. Ready for movie night. There's also some USB ports hidden throughout as well. You can see a couple that are down here. And in every little nook you find, there's a couple of cup holders. This thing comes with tons of cup holders. This right here is for the Timberline heating system that heats your hot water and your shower. And then this is one of those main panels I was talking about before. It's one of three panels to operate all of your high level uh, equipment on this airstream. You'll also notice with your view from laying down that there's a cool speaker system there. And there are a couple of little storage spots here and hers as well his and her storage it's pretty legit so daniel is trying to figure out how we can live rv life in the van without getting a pillow topper for this mattress i think it's pretty comfortable but to be honest i don't think he's going to survive very long without one what do you think leave a comment below of sleeping arrangements one of the most common questions that we're getting is where is dash gonna sleep in the van caveat we are not a parenting blog so we're not gonna be giving you any advice on how you raise your toddler dash what we're planning on doing is to be honest sometimes he still sleeps with us so he'll sleep on the bed in here but we also have a little mattress for him so we've got like a Montessori style bed and then when he gets a little bit bigger, we've already got a bed that actually blows up that fits in between the seats in the front that he can sleep on that actually like a full-sized human can use. So we've got options. Uh. And as you can see, he's already pretty comfortable with how to get off the bed. Good work, dude. Yeah. Yeah. And that's an iPad. Now that we've implemented a little bit of YouTube magic and the living room is back in place. A couple other really cool things about this back here is that we can actually put that table that I mentioned to you on my desk earlier back here and you can create a little eating space. That being said, the table's kind of small for that and we don't really plan on doing that. Our goal is to chase good weather and to eat outside for the most part. This is also where we have more storage. Now, because we got the E1 package, it basically eliminates all of the storage underneath the bed with electronical components. But we've got a really large storage spot here. This is that blow up bed I was telling you about that we can use for dash. But you've got a big storage space back here, a big storage space back here, and I'll show you how long this thing is. As you can see, I think it's really long. I can't actually reach the back of it. So this is where we expect it will probably put like pillows and blankets and all the setup for our bed. We also have a couple other storage spaces right here. Nothing too crazy. And voila, that's our bedroom slash living room in the van. Now that I've showed you a majority of the interior, I'll show you what the back of the van is like because this is one of the things that we love about it, that when we park anywhere, we can just open this baby up and get those amazing So this is our garage in the van. And it's not crazy huge. These are those extra pieces that I was telling you about that extend the bed. So maybe they're more like a foot long than a couple of inches. You've got this great little space underneath here, but in the normal setup without the E1 package, all of this would be set for storage. Well, for us, it's a whole bunch of big fancy batteries 
So not a whole lot of extra storage underneath there. This also has a nightshade. So there are a couple of things that the back of the van actually has. First is the nightshade, which pulls down so that you can't see into the van for the back of the windows at night. That's electronic, it's pretty cool. And there's also a bug screen that goes down. Again, electronic, and makes this when you've got your bed set up. Really nice, pretty view. But for the sake of time, as you guys have been hanging out with us for a while at this point, we'll show you those cool shades later. Daniel mentioned earlier that this is the Tommy Bahama edition. And in true fashion, there's tons and tons of Tommy Bahama stuff that comes with it, but we're gonna show you that in the house versus doing that in the van. Hello, said all of the stuff. Okay, Dee, walk us through it. What we got going on here? All right, so first we've got this Tommy Bahama Coconut Oasis hand cream, hey. And then we've got some, this is a, a, a throw. That's what it says on here. Um, one of the really cool things is it's got the prices on there. So this is a $55 throw. These are some bed sheets. I can see the, this is a fitted sheet for the back area there. So that's kind of cool. We don't have one for that. So might end up actually using that. We've got some towels here. Two bath towels, two hand towels, and two washcloths. And we've got two sets of those. Those so are pretty. We might is, actually so use technically those. We have four bath towels. Um, that's a lot. We've got some pretty cool pillows here. Um, there's one, two, three, four pillows. Um, you think we'll use those? Uh, no. I'm Southern. I beg to differ. We may use the pillows. You know, us Southern gals are all about the throw pillows. Honestly, I can't be the only one who doesn't want like a hundred pillows on a bed. Um, and I know I'm not alone. So if you're one of those uh, significant others that doesn't enjoy like 500 pillows on a bed, let me know below in a comment. Um, and um, as since we're on the topic of pillows here, another pillow, Tommy Bahama sailfish there. You've got another relax, I guess relax in a bed of 100 pillows. You've got a Tommy Bahama home set here, which uh, looks like a big old comforter and I don't know, a bunch of other stuff as well. Dash, what's your favorite? Is your favorite that lotion? <laughs> Figure out, you wanna touch the light, baby? Yeah, okay, or eat the lotion, fantastic. This. This actually is pretty cool. This is a Tommy Bahama cooler here um, with a bottle opener on the outside of it. That looks kind of cool, but it's also very big. So if we were to bring this, it would pretty much fill up our whole garage area we we're just talking about. But still, very, very cool, cool. A cool cooler. Comes with this, these chairs and they are, Awesome. I mean, these literally, like you've got the, it's kind of hard to tell here, but let me open this up. None of this stuff has ever been opened up. Obviously. So you can see the Tommy Bahama name here in these, uh, these chairs. And I believe, what is this that's attached to it? Cup holder. Yeah, so you've got a Tommy Bahama cup holder and chair. That so chair is huge. It is huge. So this is not something we're going to bring with us. Um, this is also another chair right here. You've got a stuffed animal that comes with it as well. I'm just kidding. This doesn't come with it. More accessories here. We've got three more boxes of goodies here. Let's see what's in here. I honestly don't know what's in these boxes. It just came with all this stuff. So check it out for the first time. Okay, this is... This looks like glassware. Um, let's check For a van? Yeah, it's like, yeah. It's glass? It's legit glass, yeah. It's got like a gold rim on it, on the edge there. It might be kind of hard to see, but they're very, very pretty. Um, yeah, these are really, really nice. And maybe not functional. What is this? We're opening this up for the first time. Tommy Bahama exclusive here. Okay, let's see. This is a corksicle ice bucket. It's pretty nice. I mean, it's corksicle. That's always nice. Yeah. 
Okay, one more box here. We've got... Ooh, bubble wrap. I have no idea what this is. <laughs> you just made Dash really happy with the bubble wrap. Yeah. I literally have no idea what this is. Any guesses? Yeah. <laughs> this is big reveal here. I don't know if you're ready for this. You ready for this big reveal? It smells the strong. The last Tommy Bahama exclusive item that comes with this $300,000 camper. A candle? A candle! That's actually a pretty... That's a neat looking candle. Yeah, check that out. That thing smells really strong. This is a big room and you could smell it as soon as Daniel unbubble wrapped it. Honestly, like, I, I, I'm not a candle person and I really, really dig this candle here. And this candle has an MSRP of $70. This is a $70 <laughs> candle right here. Um, That's ridiculous. It smells really good. I'm right. not saying I would pay $70 for it, but I mean, I'm not saying I wouldn't. It's pretty good. I mean, I guess you kind of did. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so are you going to light a candle in the camper? Uh, no, definitely not. Okay. Now, on top of all of this Tommy Bahama gear, it also came with a 30 amp cord, a 15 amp adapter, um, some wrenches, and a few other accessories that you would need to kind of get started. Uh, with your camping experience. So on top of the van and, and everything else, all the accessories and I mean, it, it, it comes with a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. So that part is really, really cool. It's, it's, it's literally turnkey. Well, there you have it folks. That is our $300,000 Airstream Interstate van. What do you think, Dean? You pretty excited about it? I'm really excited. I'm honestly excited because it's gonna allow us to do some boondocking some mooch docking, some family member's house, which is also gonna cut down to some of our campground costs. Um, and honestly, just excited about the flexibility of it all, I think. I think, um, you know, having the smaller, more compact size is just gonna give us so much more freedom than we had with a 30 foot trailer. Agreed. And also on that money side of things, one thing a lot of people don't realize, if you haven't ever bought an RV before, you may not know that unlike a regular car, because this is classified as an RV, you don't get a five-year loan on these things. You can get a loan that's up to 20 years. So it makes your payment a lot less. Granted, you still need to put a 20% down payment on most of these things. Actually, no, actually uh, it can be as low as 10%. Really? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that does make it something that is a little bit more uh, realistic than if you had to put like a five-year loan on one of these. It's true. And I don't know about your city, but even on a 20-year loan, the cost of this was less than a one-bedroom apartment in downtown St. Petersburg, so. There's that. But Baby Dash is getting really sleepy. And to be honest, we got a pack because, well, it's time for us to move into the van and live full-time life in this thing. So if you haven't already this week, make sure you wander local because as you know, it's good for the soul.